You're listening to Simple Ritz Radio, episode 81, and today is a special bonus episode, another Friday Five and Five, and today is all about joy. Yes, we're uncovering five ways to experience more joy in your everyday. Welcome to Simple Roots Radio with Alexa Sherm. Alexa believes that simplicity in life is the key to achieving true and lasting health. And now your host, Alexa Sherm. Welcome back to Simple Roots Radio. I'm your host, Alexa, and today is another Friday 5 in 5 or 10. If you've been following along, then you know these Friday 5 in 5 minutes really tend to be 10 to 15 minutes because the reality is 5 minutes is just really fast. But someday I'm going to get there and I'm going to hold true to Friday 5 and 5. Otherwise, it's just going to sound like a really great name. Anyways, today is all about finding more joy. This is something that I've been thinking about, that I've been pondering, that I have been trying to understand. Like, how do we experience more joy? And what does joy mean to our health? Not just our physical health, but our spiritual health, our relational health, like the health of everything, right? So I'm trying to relate joy to all these things. And this is what I do at night when I'm going to bed is I think about deep life questions such as how do we experience more joy? And what is joy? Is joy and happiness the same thing? Are they different? Is joy an emotion? Or is it this transcendental thing that is of the spiritual realm, right? Maybe joy isn't a feeling after all. So I did some research and I did some prayer and... I really wanted to uncover what joy is. So hopefully today I can help you do that and then give you five ways to experience more joy in your everyday life. Okay, so first up, what is joy? Well, Webster's Dictionary defines joy as happiness. And if you look up happiness, it's defined as joy. So joy and happiness tend to be the same thing, right? They're used interchangeably. But again, I kind of thought that people were starting to pull out joy from happiness and and try and make joy like its own thing. Like outside of emotion, joy is just this spiritual realm thing that people have where happiness is in the emotion. It's something that we feel. It's got stipulations and it comes with choice. But what I found through studying and studying and studying is that in most cases, joy and happiness go together. They're used interchangeably, and this is especially true in the Bible where theologians studied over a hundred verses in the Bible where they used the words joy and happiness and found that they were really used interchangeably. There's no distinct one, distinction between them. And I, the more I thought about that, the more I felt right about that, that joy and happiness are the same thing, that joy is an emotion. It's not this spiritual realm thing. Granted, it comes with a spiritual realm and we can have more joy if we have that spiritual health. But joy is essentially an emotion, right? Joy tends to be a good feeling. It's not a conviction. It's not a persuasion or a decision. It's a feeling. It's an emotion. And it's a good one, one that we want more of, one that can actually help us to experience life to the fullest, to live without regrets, to take more risk, and just to be more kind to other people. So joy is this good feeling in the soul, but there's this notion that joy has a stipulation, but it doesn't, it's outside of that. And that's good news because when we start to add stipulations to joy, like I'll be joyful when I have X, Y, and Z, or when I look like X, Y, and Z, or when I lose these 10 pounds, right? Or when I get married, or when I have kids, or when my kids um, aren't in this baby phase, or when I get that promotion, right? We attach a stipulation often to happiness and joy when really it's outside of that. It doesn't have a stipulation. And I think when we start viewing it as that, when we start viewing joy as something that we can have, a feeling and emotion that we can live with here and now in the everyday, no matter what situation we're faced at, no matter what life phase we're in, it changes things, right? And if we can live with more joy, then, then maybe we can start to take a breath. Maybe we can start to see more beauty. Maybe we can start to laugh more, right? Maybe our health will start to fall into place. Maybe our relationships will get deeper. Maybe we'll experience more relationships. Maybe we'll do bigger things. Maybe we'll take more risks. Maybe we'll really start to feel that, right? So how do we get more joy? Here's my five tips to living with more joy. And the first one is knowing Jesus. Okay, I don't talk a ton about faith on here, but if you follow along, I do bring it up. And I'm gonna bring it up even more this summer because what I'm finding is that faith is such a foundational component to health. 
It's a foundational component to happiness. And the reason is, is that Jesus provides a new hope that otherwise wouldn't exist, right? Without Jesus, then joy and happiness are conditional rather than unconditional. They do come with conditions and stipulations. And without Jesus, then joy and happiness are conditional rather than unconditional. They then have stipulations. But if we have Jesus, then they are unconditional. They are without stipulation and we can find joy in the midst of pain and suffering. I know this hit home very closely to me the last few weeks when a very close family member passed away far too soon. And as I watch my family grieve, as I grieve, as I watch my kids grieve, I have to understand how can we experience joy again? How can we continue on with life and joy and happiness Even though life as we know it is completely changed in the blink of an eye, right? A person you love is gone. And I I think there are a lot of other ways that we can lose joy. But I think one of the deepest and hardest ways is to lose someone you love. And I think in this is when I really started to grasp that joy can be found, that happiness can be found even among sorrow, that it's not either or situation, that we can have multiple feelings happening, we can have grief, and we can have sorrow, and in the same time, we can experience that joy. And so what is joy, and where do we get it? Again, I think it can only be found in Jesus. And the reason is, is that without Jesus, we stare at life and the joy waiting for the sorrows to come. But in Jesus, we stand in the sorrows and see joy in eternity. You see, joy in Jesus comes from the eternal perspective. It comes from knowing that, yes, there's going to be pain. There's going to be hardship. This, This life here on earth is not going to be easy. In fact, it could be a downright struggle. But there's joy and hope and eternity in living the perfect life in heaven, the new earth with no more pain, no more sorrow, no more fear, no more tears, right? Like, can you imagine a perfect life without all of that in the presence of the ones you love? Perfect? That is where joy comes from. And that comes from believing in Jesus, right? Because he's the one who died on the cross so that ultimately we could live in eternity. And there is there is hope there, right? And hope brings joy. So even in the midst of sorrow, if you believe in Jesus, if you have Jesus, and if you grow closer to him, then you can see why we can experience joy in the midst of pain, in the midst of suffering, because there is greater hope and something more perfect than anything that can happen here on earth. So the first step is to know Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, to ask him into your heart, but to really study him. And if you're a believer and you still don't think, and and you're still struggling with joy, it's it's really to dig in and know more about him because in him, he really is a foundational piece of providing that joy. And once we have that, then we can go to tip number two, and that's to stop settling. I do this often, right? And I see other people do it. Like we settle because we don't think we're capable of having that or we don't deserve that. And I'm not saying that we necessarily deserve these things, but we, we settle kind of for this life and we just get stuck here. And a part of it is I think we get fearful and anxious about taking the risk to step outside. Sometimes doesn't it feel like the pain of now is safer because you know it than the thought of being joyful and getting disappointed, being joyful and getting let down, right? Like there's a little bit of a fear of like opening up and letting those joy floodgates open and then having it smashed and crash against you. But here's a quote that I I love, and it's by C.S. Lewis, and it said, We are half-hearted creatures, fooling about with drink and sex and ambition, when infinite joy is offered us, like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because they can't imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday at the sea. We are far too easily pleased. And I believe that to be true in my own life and in other people's lives. We are far too easily pleased. We are far too easy to convince to just settle. Rather than to look at the big ideas, to look at the big dreams, and to go after it, right? We don't have to settle. And I think if we if we pursue something more, if we look outside and think outside and just take steps, then we'll find more joy in that. So tip number two is to stop settling and to take big steps. Number three is to make space for joy. I mean, all of these are hard for me, but this is also hard and something that I've had to learn even since my sickness. If you've been following along, you know that I say this. One of the big turning points in my healing journey was having um, my doctor that I work with tell me one day, you know, you can't continue to be everything for everyone because it will kill you. And 
It was so startling to me because I feel like the world kind of tells you, you have to be everything to everyone. Keep going, keep fighting, do it all, be it all. Um, But at the end of the day, that's doing nothing for any of us. And so what I've learned is to make space. It's to make time to do what I know I need to get done in a day and then to make time for rest and relaxation that we don't have to hustle 24 hours a day to ultimately achieve success and achievement. Because if we do that, I guarantee there's burnout on the other side that even if you work constantly and you never allow yourself to look up and enjoy what's around, maybe you never will, right? Maybe you'll continue that rat race for the rest of your life. Even though you've achieved what you've set out to do, you won't see it. And so if we make space for joy, we're more apt to see all the things in the little ways that are bringing us joy and happiness in the everyday. But we have to make space. And I can assure you that space for joy isn't just going to naturally pop up in your schedule, right? I don't know about you, but my schedule seems to get filled with things that don't always bring me the most joy, right? Obligations. Not not always, but oftentimes mm, the things that I want, the, the things that bring me joy and excitement are things that I actually have to schedule in. <laughs> Um, and then time seems to fill itself with other things. So again, we have to make space for joy. We have to stop worrying about racing and hustling and instead to live here in the present. There's a quote by Max Lucado that says, the key is this, meet today's problems with today's strengths. Don't tackle tomorrow's problems until tomorrow. You do not have enough strength yet. You simply have enough for today. So worrying here about the today. Tip number four is to find it in the ordinary and the mundane. This has really been a challenge to me is to realize that the unexpected should be expected because it seems like the unexpected happens every day. Like, when do I start to expect the unexpected? And I don't mean that in a negative mindset, but I mean that in a way to be proactive with this rather than reactive. Because I feel like when I'm reactive to what's happening around me, then I'm angry and I'm bitter and I'm tired and exhausted and I feel like I'm just trying to survive. But if we can be more proactive in life and understanding, okay, the unexpected might happen, but if it does, here's what I'm gonna do. To have those thoughts laid out and to realize that even in the unexpected, even in the ordinary and the mundane, there is joy to be found. And I live with this stipulation, like I've, I've, I've put a lot of stipulations on joy, that I'll have joy when... I do X, Y, and Z, or when I get to this place in my business, or when my health turns this corner, then I'll have more joy. But I'm realizing is that there's joy here that I should be experiencing. And if I'm constantly living in the future, I'm missing so much here. And I think there's more regrets if we don't do that. So starting to find more ordinary in the mundane, and I think making space for joy helps you to do that. So a lot of these just kind of It's kind of like the snowball effect. Once you start doing one, then the next one starts happening and the next one. And you start to realize like you can bank joy pretty quickly. And yes, you can bank joy, right? You can build it up so that if something does come up, something unexpected, it doesn't break you. Um, And instead you have that life float to keep you going. Um, So finding it in the ordinary and the mundane. And number five is to let go of perfection and accept your weakness. Here's the deal. God's calling doesn't depend on our perfection. Thank goodness. But as long as we seek perfection, again, we're living in this futuristic mindset where we're not seeing the joy here. We're waiting for joy. We're chasing joy. And we believe we can't have it until all these things are met. The reality is, is that there is no such thing as perfection. We will never achieve perfection. It just can't happen. It's not a battle that's worth your energy. And the same thing is fighting against your weakness. I do this too. I see other people doing it. Is that we're told, again, we can be everything to everyone. And so you just do everything, even though you're not great at it. But this is what makes the world go round, right? Is that everyone has their own unique set of strengths and weaknesses. And we allow other people to pick up our weaknesses so that we can just live in what we're good at, live in what our strengths are. And even though we'll never be perfect, um, we kind of have to let die to that. But just to realize that, If we own our perfection, we ask for help in our weaknesses, or we just own our weaknesses, then we're not so brought down by them. We're not so torn down by those things that we just aren't capable of. And we realize that that's okay because there's other people to fill in those gaps. So if we let go of perfection and accept our weakness, I believe we'll find more joy there. And those are the five tips. Again, just to remind you quickly is one is Jesus, right? Jesus, 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 because he is our eternal hope. Number two is to stop settling. Think about those big ideas and go after them. Number three is to make space for joy. Number four is to find it in the ordinary and the mundane. 
And number five is to let go of perfection and accept your weakness. Now I know joy is a journey. I know that. But here's the thing. It's the snowball effect. Once we start understanding and being aware that joy isn't something that we have to wait for or chase, but it's something that we can feel right now in the everyday, even among sorrow and pain and hurt, we can still find joy. So today, my challenge is to help you stop, to slow down, to make some space and really count all the ways in which you live joyful. Maybe you don't even know what brings you joy. So write down, what does bring you joy and happiness? What is it? And start keeping track of those things so that you can do more of that daily. Maybe it means tonight you actually slow down and you realize, I really like cooking supper for my family. Maybe tonight you don't do the 15th load of laundry that seems like it never ends and needs to be done. And instead, you just play a quick game of cards with your kids. Maybe you go on a family walk. Maybe you hit up an exercise class after work because You really do enjoy working out when you have the time. So you're going to make the time to work out. Maybe it means establishing a morning routine. Maybe it means starting a gratitude list. Like there are so many ways for us to awaken, to open our eyes to the idea of finding joy everywhere. And once we start to see it, it's hard to unsee it, right? Because we want more of that. We want what makes us feel good. And so even if you're living in a place of contentment, of settling, Once you start to kind of step outside of that, start to experience more, maybe take a risk and change up your routine, right? Um, Diversify what you do. Then you can experience more joy and you'll naturally want more of that. So that's your challenge. Find more joy. Find the ways in which you experience more joy. Keep track of them. Write them down and do more of that. But I want to know, what does bring you joy? And I want to know, what tip are you going to start adding into your own life to find more joy in your everyday. So shoot me an email at alexa at simplerootswellness.com or leave a comment in the show notes at simplerootswellness.com slash 081 and let me know where are you finding more joy and what does bring you joy. While you're at the show notes, you can find everything about today's show. Again, that's at simplerootswellness.com slash 081. So head on over there to learn more about today's show, a few extra tips that we got going for you and even a special handout. So I hope you enjoy, and I hope today and this week that you can live with more joy. Next week, coming up on the show, we have a very special guest coming on to talk about something that's a really big topic. It's called glyphosate, and glyphosate is the chemical in Roundup, and we're really going to dig into what it's doing to our environment and to our body. And I don't want to just take one side, because I live in the Midwest, and Agriculture is kind of what makes this part of the world go round. And so trying to bring to light the respect of farmers and agriculture, but at the same time, bring this awareness of what glyphosate isn't just doing to our health, but to our planet. So I hope you'll tune in next week. I know it could be a highly controversial episode, but I know it's going to be so insightful and I can't wait for you to jump on and hear what she has to say about glyphosate. In the meantime... Don't forget to leave a rating and review. Again, you can do that at simplerootswellness.com slash review or find me on iTunes at Simple Roots Radio. It takes literally no more than two minutes out of your day. You only have to do it once and it means the world to me. I tell you all the time and I'm serious. This literally is the lifeblood of the show. So just head on over there, leave your honest feedback and opinion and know that I read every single one and I tailor the show to what you want more of. So head on over there, leave a rating and review. And in the meantime, don't forget to figure out what brings you more joy. And I'll see you back here next week.